Every hamlet, village, town, and city has places known or not so known to the citizens who live and visit. It is these secrets that draw curious interest as wandering engages the senses. Like others of its kind, Indiana, Pennsylvania fills its nooks with riddles and surprises. Welcome to Hidden Treasures of Indiana. It's a place for IEP students to study, socialize, or even grab a cup of coffee. The Patrick J. Stapleton Library is home to tens of thousands of books and records open to the public. But far into the nooks of the library lie one of Indiana's best kept secrets. Walk up the three flights of stairs of the building and you will find the Special Collections Archive. This archive holds many historical treasures and secrets of IUP and the entire nation. Harrison Wick is the man who takes care of these wonderful world relics. Well, my name is Harrison Wick. I'm the Special Collections Librarian and University Archivist here at IUP. We collect and preserve the university history. Um, we collect manuscript groups that are relevant to uh, Pennsylvania and Western Pennsylvania in, in particular. Uh, we have about 60,000 linear feet of archival material. Uh, we also have uh, about 40,000 rare books, and that includes the oldest thing we have is a cuneiform tablet from about 2600 BC. We've had that for about 50 years. IEP's had it for about 50 years. And it is a, uh, you'd think that, you know, a cuneiform tablet, which is uh, nothing more than uh, lettering uh, placed on a, using a stylus on a clay tablet, would be something significant. It's lasted almost 40, 600 years. You'd think it'd be something important, right? Well, it's a receipt for two goats. The rare collection holds pieces from around the world. The Spanish manuscript, now that is by far the most beautiful thing that we have. Uh, that is uh, a magnificent uh, book. It's a, a book bound on, uh, the, the pages are leather vellum pages, and uh, it was actually a court case read in front of the court of King Philip III, and uh, it is uh, quite unusual. It is. It was, dates from about 1635. Our first edition of the complete works of Geoffrey Chaucer, uh, that dates from 1598, and that is uh, uh, his, not, not just the Canterbury Tales, but all of his works combined into one text block. We have both the first edition and the second edition of this book. The second edition was published on, by subscription in 1602. Uh, this is uh, quite unusual because it has the first portrait of Chaucer. And that's quite unusual. It's the first printing of that. That's from 1598. That's 400 years ago. Included in these collections is world as well as Indiana history. Many of the artifacts we have uh, are, are related to IUP history. It's a commemorative plate that, was, uh, that shows John Sutton Hall. Uh, it was bought probably from the bookstore in about 1890. From tiny to tedious, these magnificent works are available to students, researchers, and community members alike. We're here to help everyone. Uh, we're not just here for students and faculty. We're here for the university community. We're here for visiting researchers from, from anywhere. When looking for treasure, you don't have to go far. Escape the mundane and transport yourself through space and time and explore Indiana University of Pennsylvania's archive. Treasures come in a variety of forms, sometimes in unlikely places. Bob's Pizza is one of the hidden treasures in Indiana. Located on 4th Street, Bob's Pizza is only a couple of blocks away from IEP's campus, tucked away on top of a hill. It doesn't look like much on the outside, but looks can be deceiving. The recipe is very simple. Sometimes all you need are quality ingredients to make a special pizza. Our pizza is square, and we only sell plain cheese or just pepperoni. Those are the only toppings we have and it's kind of a medium thickness crust. And uh, we sell sandwiches too. In operation since 1977, Bob's Pizza has grown so popular that it now has more than 5,000 fans on Facebook. It is one of the best hidden treasures of Indiana. It only takes one slice to get hooked. 
Close to the IEP campus is the Commonplace Coffee House and Roastery. Commonplace is a hidden treasure of Indiana. It's one of the most popular coffee shops in town, and definitely one of the best. Commonplace is truly a hidden treasure due to its location. It's located on Grant Street, only visible from the street because of its sign, but well worth the hunt. Recently, Commonplace participated in a national competition for the best coffee shop in America with more than 600 participants. Commonplace brought home the silver medal. So it's kind of interesting, just this past year, uh, the other regional manager signed us up for the Da Vinci America's Best Coffee Shop. Nobody really knew what it was, and they had somebody come to each store. Uh, actually, they came down to the Pittsburgh store and was a secret shopper. So they came in and they looked at the place, and people voted, so fan voting was a part of it. Um, for us to even get into the competition. The competition was held in New York uh, just this past March. And we were surprised that we even made it to the round of actually going. So out of um, uh, the whole eastern seaboard, I guess, or the eastern side, uh, we were one of the six people that got able to go to the America's Best Coffee House. And so we packed up and we went. I was one of the ones that was actually able to go, which was really fun. They have built a friendly, cozy atmosphere where people can easily meet to study or simply to catch up with old friends. The goal of Commonplace is to keep the quality of their products high, even though they are expanding and attracting new coffee drinkers every day. This Indiana treasure now has three locations, including one in Pittsburgh. If you are a coffee lover, Commonplace provides all types of flavors and specialties to make sure you leave this treasure with an awesome taste in your mouth. It only takes one sip to notice the difference. Nestled in the heart of Indiana, Pennsylvania, a stately house and an adjoining building are situated next to a small, wooded memorial park. Traffic flows past this location at the corner of 6th Street and Wayne Avenue throughout the day. But few know the secrets contained within. The Historical and Genealogical Society of Indiana County, commonly known as the Historical Society, resides here housing the artifacts and archives that constitute the history of the greater Indiana community. The Silas M. Clark House, built in 1870, features two parlors, decorated with period furniture, as well as a great room available for use by community organizations. The actual museum is located next door in a building that was formerly a National Guard armory, which was acquired by the Historical Society in 1999. Well, I think our historical society, like a lot of local ones, plays a very important role in that uh, we're able to capture a lot of um, all the sort of day-to-day -day life that uh, the community has. Um, unlike some maybe bigger museums where you have fancy displays and uh, very detailed things, they sometimes overlook the day-to-day -day aspects of the uh, days gone by, and I think we do a good job of capturing that, that aspect of things. Both permanent and temporary displays showcase the history of life in Indiana County, from one-room schoolhouses, to antique medical equipment, to current work by local artists. The Historical Society preserves the past for the interest of the future. Many people will come in and say, I had never been in here. I didn't know all this was here. What's always interesting is when they come in and see a picture and say, that was my dad, or that was my grandmother you have on that old poster there, or something like that. In addition to maintaining the museum, exhibits, and library, the Historical Society also provides valuable services to the communities across Indiana County. I think we're one of the hidden treasures because we do try and take all our, all our ad artifacts come from donations, they're given to us. And we try and take those artifacts, preserve them if we can and if we need to, and then get them out on display. Hidden in plain sight, the Historical and Genealogical Society is a treasure of Indiana that exists both as a place to look back and a place to look forward at the secrets and stories of life in Indiana County.
Spirits are high in the music department at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. The organ, donated by the American Guild of Organists, has taken up permanent residence in Cogswell Hall. James Thomas Schauer, executive director of the AGO, solicited proposals several months ago from all across the country looking for the perfect home to receive the donation of the Pogorzelski and Yankee Memorial Organ. Music lovers Ronald G. Pogorzelski and Lester D. Yankee were longtime residents of Bucks County, Pennsylvania, and owned a very successful small antiques and lamp business. The mandate from these donors was to assist organ students who would be hindered by lack of funds or lack of accessibility to an organ. This memorial organ will be used for teaching and recitals, as well as an annual performance of the winning piece in the AGO's Porgorzelski Yankee Composition Competition. There was one particular proposal which stood out among all of the others received. It was Indiana University of Pennsylvania's own Dr. Christine Kluel who submitted the winning pitch. This set of ideas realized the high hopes of Porgozelski and Yankee and offered a long-time solution for IUP as well as filling a major void. And all of these aspects of the, uh, how the organ would be used were embraced brilliantly in the proposal that Christine Kluel wrote and sent in to the AGO. Now, we had other good proposals, I have to admit, but I think the proposal that Dr. Kluwell sent was compelling to me and to the members of our committee that reviewed it as well. Dr. Kluwell's plan persuaded Mr. Thomas Schauer that Indiana University of Pennsylvania was a perfect fit. But there were other factors that came into play as well. We had other proposals that were very highly uh, well stated, very well stated, and that uh, gave us reason to consider other schools as well. And in point of fact, there was one other school in New York that initially appeared to be well suited for the instrument, but it was not to come to pass. That instrument could not properly, comfortably uh, fit in that school. And by comparison, we have this magnificent Cogswell Hall, this rehearsal room. It's the perfect size. It's going to have the perfect acoustics. It is uh, exactly the right space for the instrument. And the entire community here at IUP, as, as shown in Dr. Kluwell's uh, proposal, is totally behind the idea of getting the instrument. There was no question uh, that Dean Hood and the other members of the community here wanted this instrument. So uh, at the end of the day, when we assessed all the proposals and needed to get the instrument into its proper home, this was the place where it had to come. The impact that this memorial organ will have on the Indiana community cannot be understated. As music students, we're, we're obviously all very busy, um, and sometimes uh, scheduling can can be a bit of a challenge, so um, it's, it's really um, quite convenient to have such a high quality instrument right inside the building um, to, be, uh, to be available for, uh, for practice time or for, uh, for lesson time. So for me, as an alum, I'm excited to have another performing instrument to be able to come and play at my home school. It's, it's quite an honor. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to continuing to serve IUP and uh, bring about more great music. So thank you IUP and thank you Dr. Carol Tatey and thank you Christine Clue and thank you AGO for all the love of organ music that you've brought into my life. Sometimes referred to as the Royal Instrument, this unique addition of the Poor Grizelzi Yankee Memorial Organ to IUP cannot help but enhance the cultural life of Indiana and will be treasured by all who cross its path for generations to come. As you wander through your days wondering what you'll find, perhaps there are hidden treasures in your backyard. Enjoy the search. <laughs>